So I've had my Oculus Quest 2 for around a week now, and I have some thoughts. VR over the last year has seen such a boom in growth, and a lot of it can be attributed to the Quest 2 being just so much more accessible. A 1832 by 1920 per eye resolution, hand tracking and being completely wireless, all at a $299 price tag is absolutely insane, especially compared to the HTC Vive that launched at $800, required base stations, a cable, clunky controllers, and a per eye resolution of only only 1080 by 1200. We've come so far in just five years. However, the Quest 2's competitive 299 price tag comes at a price another price. A slightly more concerning price, which makes the entire experience pretty problematic. With the VR industry moving at such a pace and VR adoption being higher than ever, clear, honest, and fair knowledge surrounding these devices is more important than ever. All things Facebook aren't all that great at. I've seen enough reviewers and even bigger generally trustworthy channels such as Linus Tech Tips avoid the Quest 2's biggest controversy. Linus mentioned it briefly before just moving on. Logging in with a Facebook account is not optional anymore with the Oculus Quest 2. You won't have to go far to find strong opinions about this move and while for my part the online privacy ship sailed a long time ago, it's definitely something where you need to decide how it makes you feel. With that out of the way though, I'm jazzed. Though I get it, it was a sponsored video, you can't exactly talk about the controversies of the products that you've been sponsored to make a video on, but if you look through the comments, it's actually very difficult to find a single person not talking about the Facebook controversy. Yeah, I'm sure most of you knew what I was talking about, and that is Facebook. That's the biggest problem with this headset that we'll get into because it goes much deeper than just collecting your data and becomes far more concerning than just knowing who you are and how you play in VR. It's a serious problem with the Quest 2 that really needs to be at least discussed openly due to its implications for not only this headset but also the entire VR industry. Now the Quest 2 on the hardware side is actually pretty incredible. Let me just quickly give credit where credit's due with some of the hardware here. First let's just talk the setup. This thing I arrived at my home, I opened the box, I took the plastic out of the controllers, and I put the headset on. That's it. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. When you put the headset on, it promptly boots up and greets you with a super straightforward setup, though I didn't capture any of this because I wasn't expecting it to boot up so fast and throw me into a room setup, so I'm just going to use the promotional footage here. I logged into my Facebook account. Yeah, we'll get to the whole Facebook thing in a minute here. Connected it to the app on my phone and traced out my play space using the front cameras on the headset. The play space tracing is great and it allows you a one-to-one -one play area, unlike the Steam VR room setup that forces you into a rectangle, which obviously cuts off valuable space in your play area, especially if your play area isn't perfectly rectangular. The Quest 2 does not care about how weird and windy your play space is, it lets you trace everywhere and get a virtual one-to-one -one representation of your real life space. So being able to do all of this through these front cameras, these four front cameras where they're all stitched together to provide you an image and see your play space clearly overlaid onto your real world and clearly outlined is amazing. It's super useful and very quick to set up and I don't know why the Valve Index hasn't implemented something like this when it has front cameras also. I feel way safer knowing exactly where my boundaries are unlike the forced rectangle that SteamVR wants to force me into. And all of this just made me realize how how insanely out of date SteamVR's whole setup is. However, every now and then my Quest 2 would just randomly forget the play space I laid out, likely down to it using markers in your environment to try and figure out where the headset is and where to lay over that play space that you've traced out because obviously it doesn't have base stations that stay in one place at all the time. So it constantly tries to figure out from the information stored on the headset where that play space is and looks for markers within your environment to lay it over. So sometimes it would just randomly forget completely which is very frustrating and I'd have to go through and trace out the entire thing again. And also once I didn't have the usual play space warning pop up come up when I got close to a wall, which caused me to end up sucker punching my wall while trying to score a goal in Echo VR. But I did score the goal, so uh, I mean, sacrifice a wall for a goal, I mean... Is kind of worth it. However, the Quest 2's cameras are still black and white, unfortunately, and generally pretty shoddy quality. The index has full color cameras. However, the depth that's provided by four of them being dotted around the headset and combined together provides a you know much better depth than there is on just the two cameras on the index. I'm able to walk around my studio and even work on my PC without any problem at all, just using the cameras on the front of the headset, though I don't know why you'd want to do this for any period of time, but it's useful if you need to quickly respond to a message 
uh, while you're in VR. Also with the Quest 2, once you've enabled it in settings, you can just double tap the side of the headset like this and it will enable the cameras and you can see where you are in your play space. This is super useful, especially compared to the Index where you'd have to bring up the Steam overlay and hit the little eye icon to actually activate the cameras. It can sometimes take up to two seconds for the cameras to activate. And unfortunately in my case, a lot of the time, the cameras just wouldn't activate at all. So being able to quickly see your play space just by double tapping the side is incredibly useful on the Quest 2. And literally anyone could set this thing up. Like a newborn baby could set this thing up. And I guess that's part of the problem. It's clear Facebook really want this to be accessible by literally every person on the planet, which is both a blessing and a curse. I think back to just over a year ago when I got my index, I had to peel plastic off of everything, drill two base stations into either side of my studio, plug in power adapters for both of them, and then plug in another power adapter near my PC for the index itself, and then plug in a display port and USB cable into my PC, then boot up Steam VR, update my headset drivers, my controller drivers, and my base station drivers, and then finally get to the room setup. This jump in accessibility is absolutely insane and is what impressed me the most by far. I found myself just putting on the headset and doing nothing in my oculus home because i enjoyed the feeling of putting this thing on having it boot up instantly with no cables at all and not having to go around turning on base stations in my studio whenever i wanted to use it it's a dream i also prefer these controllers over the last gen ones the bigger circular disc on top provides a area i can grip better in some games and the tracking was pretty solid for the most part i had a few cutouts during a few faster beat saber maps and a weird bug where if i used the link cable with the headset and i took the headset set off while the link cable was active and then put it back on again i would sometimes lose my tracking completely at all it would cut out intermittently and the only way to fix this would be to restart the entire headset this was a huge pain in the ass but this clearly seems to be a bug and hopefully it's fixed soon and on the display side the resolution is great the screen door effect basically doesn't exist anymore and actually from a resolution and clarity standpoint this looks much better than my index though a lot of that is also down to the better lenses on the quest 2 oculus's lenses have generally been far better on these things than Valve's lenses. The index has a lot of glare, especially when looking at white text on black backgrounds, where if I look directly at white text on black backgrounds with the Quest 2, there's only a tiny amount of glare. I can, for the most part, see very clearly on the Quest 2. However, having very specific set IPD adjustments, where there's a few set modes for IPD, is a huge pain in the ass and definitely makes this headset unusable for some people that have very specific IPDs. I could get it to a point where it was comfortable enough that things weren't blurry and it was relatively clear but I always wanted to just shift it in a tiny amount more to get it to perfectly align with my eyes but unfortunately you can't do that with the Quest 2 it's got like four set modes for IPD it sucks that they have done this I don't know why they've done this I wish we could just have an IPD slider like we did on the Quest 1 or like with the majority of other VR headsets. It's very frustrating and I hope this is something that's fixed in the next headset. But these set modes definitely writes off the headset for a lot of people that have quite specific IPD settings. Also the color range was a little muted on the Quest 2. Even though both the Index and the Quest use LCD displays, the Index is much more vibrant, blacks are more black and colors pop more. This is the best example that I can give with some color grading to represent the two displays. On the the left is the Quest 2 and on the right is the Valve Index. You see how the Quest 2 is just a little washed out and muted. However, this isn't really much of a problem unless you play games that are set in a lot of darker areas, like some sections of Half-Life Alex, Echo VR, and obviously Phasmophobia. But this is generally a pretty huge leap in VR technology. I actually end up picking up this thing more often than I do my $1,000 premium VR headset, the Index. This $300 headset has absolutely no right being this good for the price. That is, until you discover the real price that you're paying, your freedom. Now, I'm sure many of you are already well aware of the data concerns when you first boot this thing up it asks you to sign in with your facebook account and agree to a bunch of terms and conditions basically signing over your right for them to track your data it's no secret that facebook uses your vr data though many don't care all that much about this i mean you're likely watching this video because youtube showed it to you you're here right now due to your viewing habits so you're not exactly free from this data collection so why should you care about the quest 2 collecting your data well where the problem lies is facebook's continuous attempts to claim more control over what you do in VR. For example, I wanted to use the fitness app in the Quest 2 and I was instantly greeted with another Facebook login and a data collection agreement. This right here, this is the future. Every app you open, every virtual step you take will be tracked and collected as data. This is a problem due to the social implications VR is going to have in the next 10 years or so. 
Facebook knows full well that if they get into the VR game very early and dump a ton of resources into being at the forefront of VR by creating a $300 headset that can rival a $1,000 headset like the Index, yeah, it's that good. I'll have a comparison video up soon. Subscribe if you want to see that. Facebook know full well that if they can get ahead with this tech, if they can get ahead by undercutting the price, the level of power that they're going to have in five years' time is going to be unimaginable once our world starts to look far more like Ready Player One. But wait, everything I just said kind of sounds like fear You know, I don't care if they use my data. I have nothing to hide. Most social media sites track me, right? Sure, many people don't care, and I understand. But the current direct threat from Facebook and their clear overreach is the enforcement of their terms of service. Facebook can flat out brick your $300 headset if they think that you have broken their terms of service, making your $300 headset a paperweight. Now, this has already unfortunately happened to some users. Now, you might make the argument, well, just don't break Facebook's TOS. Just don't be an asshole. Obey by the rules. They're there for a reason. Sure, I guess it's a somewhat valid argument, though the fact that Facebook can even brick a $300 headset you paid money for because they thought that you encroached on their rules is a problem in all of itself, them having that ability. But an even bigger problem arises when you can be banned for something like using more than one account on the headset. Yeah, people have already been banned due to switching Facebook accounts on the Quest 2, as shown Sharing accounts between multiple people is prohibited. Likely down to Facebook wanting everyone to buy their own individual $300 VR headset instead of sharing. You can also be banned from the Quest 2 if you're under the age of 13. You can also have your headset locked if your account details don't match your real life details. This means if you don't give Facebook your real name, it can just lock you out of your headset. A user even had to send in their real driver's license to Oculus to try and get their account reactivated. This is the main problem with the Quest 2 and any future Facebook VR devices. It's scary. We've already seen platforms like YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook banning users just due to differences and political opinion. The difference now is Facebook is essentially going to have control over your secondary life, your virtual life, who you interact with, who you talk to, your movements, the games you play, your daily exercises. Now, even listening to you with the addition of Hey Facebook is a essentially Google Home or Amazon Alexa, but with your VR headset. So now it's always listening, always tracking, and with the forefront cameras, always watching. Let's also briefly mention the Oculus Store. Some games that you've already purchased on the Oculus Store on PC will also need a separate purchase on the Quest 2. I bought Beat Saber on the PC Oculus Store because I assumed it would transfer over to my Quest 2 as it was on the same account. However, Oculus expects me to buy a second time on the Quest 2. It's really gross. Actually, Oculus on Facebook aren't actually the sole problem here. They apparently, from my understanding, give the developers the option on whether or not to do this. And I don't think it should be an option for developers unless their Quest version of the same game varies drastically from the PC version. So to beat games, who made Beat Saber and chose to force me to buy the game twice, actually three times if you include my copy on Steam as well, what the f you doing? It's cringe to see such a small studio have such huge success and then milk the ever-living shit out of it with dumb business practices like this. In summary, I really, really, really like the Quest 2, at least from a hardware standpoint and a face value standpoint. I would still recommend this headset to an average user, but I can't help but feel guilty when I do. I mean, even when I bought this thing, I felt kind of guilty. I think a lot about these current issues with Facebook's overarching control and they're currently livable. Uh, they aren't acceptable at all, but I'm not super concerned as of right now, this very moment. However, it's incredibly easy to see where this is going. And although I think buying a Quest 2 right now is generally fine and pretty great value for the money it's the future and supporting a company that's going to shape that future that really concerns me basically the bottom line is if you want to get into the vr hardware game this thing is fantastic inside out tracking the ability to switch from both wide and wireless with the link cable the controllers the ease of use the display and comfort that all awesome and i will still recommend this headset to most people for the time being possibly even over the valve index just because this thing is such great value for money but i suggest that all of us keep a very close eye on facebook as they try to reach for more control in the coming years of vr development it's very important not to let our freedoms slip away before it's too late 
So I'll also be doing a comparison video between the Quest 2 and my Valve Index. Subscribe if you want to see that video. And this thing actually stacks up surprisingly well with the Index. If you appreciate the video in any way, shape or form, a like would be much appreciated. And maybe a sub if you want more content like this in the future. Thanks for giving me some time to talk about this. Really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye. This thing, not gonna lie, kinda spoke to the index. I mean, besides the Facebook concerns, dude, I don't know if I could recommend the index. So, okay, I'm kinda spoiling the video. Basically, just watch my comparison video, which will be out in like maybe a week's time. I'm hoping. It depends how long it takes to edit. Ugh. I think I'm still gonna use my index the most. Though. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna. I, I, I need a peace out. I need to like get to work. I need to leave. I, why am I even talking to you? Why am I even talking to you? I need to leave. Okay, bye. See you later. Bye bye. Have fun. Good day. Bye bye. Love you all.